Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is Physics Chapter Eight, Video Seven. Today's topic is electric potential difference and electric potential energy. The objectives are know how electric field affect movement of charges. Know the definition of、uh, potential. To understand when field does work, object naturally move to a lower energy or lower energy、uh, lower potential states. In order to move an object to a higher energy potential state, work has to be done against the field. The total energy may change from potential to kinetic. The total energy is conserved, and the potential is a location-dependent quantity. It does not depend on the test charge. Be able to determine the amount of electric potential gained when work is done on a charged object against the electric field. Determine the amount of work or energy needed to move a charged object from a lower electric potential to a higher one. Determine the amount of kinetic energy gained when a charged object is moved by electric field, and be able to convert between joules and electron volts. Electric field and movement of charge. So charged objects, we already know, create an electric field, and this electric field is a vector quantity. It affects any other charge enters into this field. Its movement is,、um, for example, if you have a positive charge around here, and you place this positive charge next to another positive charge, this positive charge is going to be repelled away. And if you put a positive charge here, it's going to be moved toward it. So the field created by positive or negative charge is going to have effect. On the charge placed in the field, and here is the equation to relate field strength, the charge, and the force on on the charge. Electric potential energy and gravitational potential energy. So electric potential field, electric field and gravitational field are very similar. So is their energy. Electric potential energy are similar to gravitational potential energy. Both involves field forces, and when gravitational Field does work, objects' potential energy decrease, and when the work is done against the field, the potential energy increase. For example, this rock. If the rock falls, the work done is by gravity. Gravity make it fall. As a result, its potential energy decreases. Now, to increase the potential energy of the rock, you have to do work to against the field. When you work against the field, its potential energy increase. Similarly. You put two charges together. If you're trying to increase the potential energy, you have to press the two positive charge together because naturally they repel each other. So you are working against its natural tendency. And similarly, to increase the potential energy around the negative and positive charge, you have to do work to separate them. As you separate them, you did work, and that work changed into potential energy of that system. To decrease the potential energy, naturally you put a two positive charge next to each other. They naturally separate. As they separate, their total energy decreases. Total potential energy decreases. Similarly, for a negative and positive charge, naturally they attract each other. That as they go toward each other, their potential energy decreases. So this is when the field does work, natural way. Its potential energy decreases when you work against the field. The potential energy increases in the similar way as gravitational field. Electric potential energy of a charged particle inside a parallel plate. So here is a parallel plate. We already know it's the field is going from the positive toward the negative. So if you have a positive charge at B, you want to move it to A. You have to do work because naturally it wants to move to the negative. Plate to move it from B to A, you have to do work. So if you do work, then the potential energy would increase. Let's take a look at this question. As a positive charge moves from B to A, the force acting on it is is that increase or decrease or stay the same. So we know one thing about parallel plates is electric field is constant. If the field is constant, the force on the charge has to be constant. So the force acting on the charge actually stays the same. What is different? Different is its potential energy. As a positive charge move from B to A, its potential energy has to increase. Why is that? Because you have to do work to move the positive charge 
to the positive plate. So the answer is A for the next part. Now, electric potential concept. Electric potential V is defined as potential energy per charge. This is kind of similar to electric field is force per charge. So this is energy per charge. So, <clears throat> so here, if you have a big positive sphere, this is going to produce the electric field. And at each location, you'll have a potential associated, not only just the field, you'll have a potential associated with that location as well. So electric potential is a property of the location within the electric field. Electric potential V does not depend on the test charge Q. So electric potential is the same for all charges at a given location. This is very similar to the concept of electric field. So a test charge, you put a 2Q here. If you put a 1 unit of Q, it will have 10 unit of potential energy. If you put a 2 unit of Q at that uh, location, the U 2 unit of Q would have 20 unit of potential energy. So different Q has a different energy, but the potential is the same. It's very similar to the electric field concept. The field at one location is the same. The bigger test charge will will result a bigger force, electric force. It's very much as the mass. The more mass you have, the more weight you have. But your mass does not affect the field in that location. Similarly, the charge, test charge, does not affect the potential or the field at that location. Next concept is equal potential lines. So equal potential lines is a lines positions of equal potential energy that's all connected. This is equal potential line because at every single point on this line, the potential energy is the same. They have the same potential. So for a charge to move on this line, the potential energy does not change. There is no work. The charge can move along this line. No work needs to be done because there's no change in potential. Similarly, as you the same thing as you move an object, say, on Earth. If you move it horizontally, it does not change its potential energy. It's the same. <clears throat> so as only as a charge goes across the potential line, goes this way, up or down, then work is done. So the potential energy changes. For a point of charge, only your cross move away toward a, away from the charge or move toward a charge, potential energy changes. If you move around this circle, potential energy doesn't change. So that's an equal potential line. That's an equal potential line. Okay. Uh, electric potential difference is delta V. So I have to make a note. In your reference table, uh, reference table use this V. In, you can see in the notation, this V actually represents potential difference. It's V represent delta V. So the two symbols are the same. Uh, maybe a little bit confusing. You need to know that V in your reference table actually represent a potential difference. So potential difference between point A and B is the change in potential between A and B. So it's potential B minus A. Potential B is energy at B divided by charge, potential energy at A is, uh, I mean, potential at A is potential energy at A divided by charge. So B minus A, that's the work done. The work done equals the change in potential energy. So V equals W over Q. This is the one in your reference table. The standard metric unit on the electric potential difference is volt or voltage. One volt equals to joules per coulomb. So if one joule of work is needed to move one coulomb's charge from A to B, you need one joule. We say the potential difference between A and B is one volt. If three joules of work is needed to move one coulomb uh, from, from A to B, then we say the potential difference between A and B is three volts. So let's take a look at this example. Six joules of work are done in pushing an object with three coulombs of charge toward a charged plate. What type of charge does the plate have on it? If you have to do extra work to push toward a positive, then charge has to be positive. 
how much potential energy is stored in electric field? Well, potential energy equals to the work done. So when you do work, you store the energy. That's six joules. How much electric potential difference was generated? Well, potential difference is W over Q. Then uh, you did six joules of work on three coulombs. So the potential difference between the two points is two volts. Work energy principle in electric field. So we already learn the work energy principle says the actual work you do, the work done by the other force, that work will change into the total energy. Could be the increase in potential or increase in kinetic. So in the last example, you have seen the work done equals to change in potential energy. So when, in this case, when a charge is released, however, in electric field, very much like a rock is dropped from a height, and that potential energy will decrease. What, what happened to its potential energy? That loss in the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. So because there is no friction and energy is conserved. So work done by the field is equals to the loss of potential energy, and that loss equals to increasing kinetic energy. Let's take a look at this example. An object with two coulombs of charge is accelerated through potential difference of 10 volts. How much kinetic energy does the object gain? The object gained kinetic energy because the field did work. How much work did the field do? Use the equation. The field uh, work equals V times Q, so it's 20 joules. So as the charge accelerates through potential difference 10 volts, the potential energy is decreased by 20 joules. And this 20 joules is converted into kinetic energy. Now work has two units. How come? Because work equals Q times delta V. Recall there are two units for Q. One is coulombs, the other one is electron volts. Depends on which you use, you can get a different unit for energy. A joule is coulomb times volts. An EV is elementary charge times volts. So to calculate EV, you need to use elementary charge. To calculate joules, you need to use C. What's the relationship between joules and EV? One elementary charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So one EV is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Okay, take a look at this example. An electron travels a distance uh, <clears throat> 2 millimeters as its potential is raised to 300 volts. How much work? In electron volts is done on the electron, how much work in joules? So to find working electron, we have to use elementary charge. And electron has one elementary charge, so it's 300 eV. To find joules, we have to use coulombs. One electron is 1.6 times 10 to the neg neg negative 19 coulombs. So total work is 4.8 times 10 to the negative 17 joules. How many... Um, EVs is required to move this many charge through potential difference. This is Coulomb, so we have to convert that into elementary charge. That many Coulombs is two elementary charge, so it's 10 EV. Next one, moving two Coulombs from infinity. Infinity is just means zero potential to a point requires this much work. What is the uh, potential? So to find a potential, you use this equation. So potential at infinity is zero. So v, v equals W over Q equals 4 volts. Here in this graph, work versus charge, the slope is the potential difference. Okay. Last one, electric potential in the circuit. So a battery-powered circuit requires um, work. The, that's why the battery, the battery does work on the charge to move it from uh, negative positive to negative. When it, when it uh, electrons has energy, it can do work to light up your light bulb and so forth. So this is the next part we're going to learn circuit electricity. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.